Okay, this is the, uh, the next video. This is only going to make sense to you if you saw the short video immediately preceding this one. In the previous video, I talked about the importance of web optimizing your videos when you're self-hosting them outside of the you know, popular sites like YouTube, Vimeo, and Viddler. So this video assumes that you've already installed the free conversion program called Handbrake, which I talked about in the preceding video. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Um, I'll show you the settings here using the Macintosh version of Handbrake. However, don't worry if you're a PC user, the settings and interface are pretty much the same. And there's also, like I said in the previous video, there's also a PC version of Handbrake as well. And did I say it's free? So free is a good price. Okay, so once Handbrake opens, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Now, there are a lot of options here, and it can look pretty daunting at first, but don't worry. You don't need to know most of the options, and we're not going to talk about all of the options. And I'm going to basically focus and talk you through step by step uh, while focusing only on the ones that you need to pay attention to. Okay, so once inside Handbrake, you'll need to change one of the preference settings. And to do that, we're going to navigate to the top toolbar and click the Handbrake menu next to the Apple logo in this case. Okay, so what you're looking for is the uh, preferences menu. On the PC, it might be under a menu option for tools and preferences or something similar. All right, so go ahead and pause this video and, and make that selection on your program. Okay, so now anyway, um, let's move forward, click preferences, and this is going to bring up the new settings window. In the general tab, which is the first tab that you can see, scroll down to the bottom where it says output file make sure you uncheck the option that says use iPod and iTunes friendly M4V file extension. Now it's helpful for me to say to you here that unchecking this option will not prevent the compatibility of your video file to work on iPads and iPhones. So don't worry about that. If you follow my instructions precisely, your video will be 100% compatible with iPhones and iPads as well as other platforms. All right. So once you've done that, click the red X in the case of Macintoshes, uh, or if you're if you're on a PC, save out of your preferences window to exit, and then uh, next, and then you'll be back at the main window here. Okay. So I'm going to have you now select your video file that you want to make web ready. So to do that, click the source icon at the top left of the handbrake main window. This is going to open up a, another window where you can navigate to the folder containing the video file that you want to optimize for the web. Now once you've done that, click the video file and then click open. Now this is going to identify the video file for Handbrake and then it will also enable all of the different options. So first of all, we need to make sure that in the drop down menu next to the box labeled format, make sure MP4 is selected. Okay, and then uh, moving across and to the right, you'll see three checkboxes. Make sure the option labeled Web Optimized is enabled. That is, put a check mark in it. This is one of the most important settings, so don't skip it. Let me say that again. This is one of the most important settings. Please don't skip it. That's what we're trying to web optimize your video, and uh, uh, it's going to be one of the main ones. There's another one I'll point out later on. So now below this, you'll see a series of tabs. You know, we're currently on the Video tab. And uh, the video codec option here is set to H.264 by default. Now, for purposes of this how-to video, let me suggest that you don't need to know what this means. Feel free to post a comment in this blog post if you really want to explore it further, and I'll respond. But I want to keep things as simple as possible here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and say that H.264 is the setting that you want. And rest assured, it is the setting to have. All right, so it's a correct one. Uh, so that's it for that. As for frame rate, it should be defaulted already to uh, the value same as source. Okay, so go ahead and leave that alone. And then we're going to come back to the video tab. But first, um, before, you know, we're going to leave the video tab for right now. We'll come back to it. But I want to first go to have you click the audio tab. Now, here you'll notice a bit rate column. Under this is a pick list. Open that up and choose 128. Again, let's not worry about the differences. 128 is the uh, the audio bit rate setting that you want to have. Okay, and then next we're going to go ahead and click the Advanced tab. And under this tab, again, there are a lot of options here, and we can safely ignore most of them. All you need to focus on here is the first option under Encoding. It says Reference Frames. Select the pick list and choose the number four. All right. Um, moving back to the Video tab, now uh, we now have our our final settings that we're going to select. So for a video file, the average bitrate over here, this is the one we're going to focus on. Okay, we want to ignore constant quality. 
and we're going to ignore target size. Instead, we want to click to enable the option for average bit rate. Now, a good rule of thumb to use is 600 in this field if you're transcoding a screencast, that is, a screen recording of your computer. Okay, in fact, this video that you're watching right now is an example of a screencast. However, if you're transcoding video that contains live action, that is, you, you know, you've captured a web video of you or some other live person talking on camera, then choose something around seven or eight hundred. Now, this setting I will take a moment just to explain a little bit. What you're doing here is uh, if effectively you're, you know, you're affecting the, the visual quality somewhat. So if after you transcode the video and see that it's unacceptable to you in terms of quality, then come back into handbrake, re-encode it with a higher bitrate setting here, uh, and then in, and bump those up in increments of one or two hundred. But just so you know, what you're actually doing here is you're trading off a little quality for video streaming speed over the web. So the higher this number is, and the more data actually has to go from the, the video server to whomever is viewing your video. And depending on their platform and the type of connection that they have, uh, a higher number might result in a video that you know does those annoying stops and starts and sputters and, and so on. So the numbers I gave you is optimum, so begin with those. And again, that's uh, about 600 if you're using a screencast or about, or about 7 or 800 for the average bit rate if you're using live action video. Okay, so for this I'm going to go ahead and select about 650 here since uh, this test video file I have contains screencast type video. And then finally we're going to go ahead and select the checkbox labeled to pass encoding. And then uh, the last step is to then identify where you want your, your file to be saved. So select the folder on your computer where you want this new file to be saved to. And you can even change the file name here if you want. Now this is where your transcoded or otherwise converted video file will be after handbrake is done doing its thing. Okay, so to uh, kick that process off, we'll, uh, we'll press the start button to begin converting the file and uh, then just let handbrake do its thing. It'll tell you when it's done. Okay, once the conversion is complete, handbrake will confirm this with you and uh, you'll be able to then navigate to the folder that you selected as the destination folder for your new web optimized video and you'll be able to then continue and upload this video for online use. All right, that's about it. If uh, you think this helped and uh, want to know more about stuff like this that I write about on screencastingwizard.com, then I hope you'll sign up for my newsletter. Catch you next time. Take care.